Kai Havertz to Arsenal. A deal that has sent a resounding sense of confusion throughout the football world. A player who, in his three seasons at Chelsea, managed to get 32 goals, 15 assists, and 139 appearances, still feels like he left a lot to be desired in his time at Chelsea. With Chelsea fans, some Chelsea fans on record saying he's, quote, one of the worst players they've ever seen in his life. Did Chelsea rob Arsenal again? I'm about to see on this video. Stuck inside a maze, I've been up for days Cardings on my face, no, you can't see a thing But I see all the hate And the fake ass niggas talking in my face But I cannot be phased I gotta be brave Provide for the fans so they don't have to slave Mom told me behave But I'm a wild out till a nigga in the grave But I'm a wild out till a nigga in the grave I'ma be a great yeah. No, hear me out I was one who, when first coming into this video, I wasn't sure how to receive the news about going in for another Chelsea player. We've, well, no, in recent history, we've seen what going for a Chelsea player has meant for Arsenal, has meant for Arsenal, I should say. We've seen Petr Cech, 2015, how that ended. We've seen Willian, we've seen Jorginho, We've seen David Luiz. We even seen Diara. We picked up Diara from them years ago. How that turned out for that for the player. It just seems like sometimes when we get Arsenal, so when we get Chelsea players at Arsenal, it just it just doesn't it just doesn't fit. You know, it just doesn't fit. But I think this one, this one seems interesting because. Before I did my research, I said, I, I said, well, everybody else said, I said, Kai Havertz, what is he? What does he do particularly well? Me, everything I know about Kai Havertz, I really know it from ch other Chelsea fans. But in doing my research, Kai Havertz is not a bad player. Really not a bad player. Let me just get into a little bit. Let me just get into why I think we signed Kai Havertz. If you picture mine back, a few, two months ago, right now, at the time of recording, we're playing at the Etihad. We go into the Etihad game, thinking City are going to play one way, they come out, play a totally different way. What City like to do, build from width, build up from the back, use their wide players, create width, make the pitch as wide as possible, create overloads, penetration, and then use penetration to kill defenses. That's sometimes how we like to play. But in that game, Man City showed a bit of their hand and showed why they're a team at that next level and Arsenal are a team that are trying to get to that level. The game adaption, the tactical adaption by Pep Guardiola was absolutely outstanding. The way he played in that game, basically essentially playing Route 1 football, Getting the ball long up to Haaland with his, his frame. He'll be able to take down the ball. Playing Kevin De Bruyne and behind. Kevin De Bruyne then used his pace. As this is for the first goal. Just use his pace to run on through. Slot it home past Ramsdale. That's just the first goal. That was con that was a continuous theme of just constant bullying and domination by early Haaland. And I think that game specifically opened Mikel Arteta's eyes as to what this team needs to take this team forward. I think this. I think he picked up Kai Havertz to be the target man, like a, a false nine, hold, up, play target man that's gonna work hard at the front, like that kind of that kind of that style of player. It's not really the type of player you see around Europe, but if you just to just to imagine the type of way I can see him working in this team, he's gonna work like how Haaland worked against Arsenal in the game at the Etihad. If you can draw your mind back to that game, you could think about how Haaland played in that game then you could kind of get a sense of what I'm trying to get at. Why I think he went for specifically Kai Havertz? All of Arsenal's forward line players are not even six foot tall. So that's just the main, that should be just the main indicator as to why Kai Havertz was signing this deal. Kai Havertz is six foot four. And he has the stats and attributes to back it up. 
He ranks in the top 20 percentile for not only expected assists for forwards, but also in the top 10 percentile for passes attempted, pass completion, and progressive passes, averaging 32.8 passes per 90 with an 80% pass completion rate and still managing 3.27 progressive passes per 90. That ranks him in the top 10 percentile for all forwards across Europe's top five leagues, according to Football Reference. If we're signing a player like that in this Arsenal side, because one of the key problems for that Chelsea side was their wingers couldn't score goals. Sterling tied on goals with Havertz with nine. Modric, Modric just came in. Pulisic not able to get goals. Um, Madaweke just came in, not able to get goals. Chelsea's biggest problem is they didn't have someone to get the goals. At Arsenal, our wingers score goals. You see Martinelli has been clinical. You've seen Saka has been clinical this season. We even see Odegaard has added to his game with goals. No, we take it up a level. You, you thought we take it up a level. To add someone with that bit of quality like this, think about the, the, the added goals that could come from that situation. Yes, a lot of our goals came from, yes, either our fullbacks or our wingers providing crosses into the box or penetrating passes or Martin Odegaard playing that penetrated pass. But just think about your times Martin Odegaard may be able to hit it up to a bigger body, like a Havertz. Havertz be able to flick it on in behind. Jesus could do it, yes, but Jesus ain't six foot four tall. Think about if Jesus, if Havertz could take the ball up the sky like this with his chest, playing Bukayo Saka in behind, get the cut back, play or play all the way over to the left-hand side of Martinelli. Think about the amount of attacking chances we can create. And I'm not even done giving you his stats. Listen to this. His work rate is something that should not be slept at as well. In this Arsenal side, we like to press, especially from the front. Kai Havertz manages 1.3 tackles and interceptions per 90, ranking him in the top 10 percentile, along with 2.3 blocks and clearances per 90, also ranking him in the top 10 percentile for forwards. His aerial presence is also not something to be slouched at because he wins 2.7 headers per game. Listen to this. That's more than Lukaku, Darwin Nunes, and Victor Osimhen. All over six feet tall. And look at the head, look at the average headers he's winning per 90. He's winning more headers than Lukaku, Darwin Nunez, and Victor Osimhen. That should just be an underlying indicator that this player might unlock a key for us that 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 that's, that we've been missing. That we've been missing, but but He's only managed to get double digit goals once ever in the season. And that was in the 20, 21, 22 season. We scored 14 goals with six assists. I think that was the year they were under Tuchel. I think that was a Tuchel year. Um, they finished top four. I mean, he wasn't bad that season. No, but that's the only time he's ever managed to get double digit goals. He hasn't really got double digit assists since being in the Premier League. Because he's not been played in that role. But I'm, I'm very interested based on his underlying stats to see what he does at Arsenal. Because, as I say, his, his, his main thing at Chelsea was to be a number nine of a centre forward. Or sometimes to play in the, to the wingers who to score goals. But the wingers couldn't score goals. That's what they brought Sterling to do. To be a prolific winger. He failed to do that in his first season. So I'm really interested to see. But, there's another but. Is that what we signed him for? Because if we're if we're not using him as a target, a target, a, a false man, target nine, target nine, or a target man, false nine, whatever you want to call it, and we're playing him as a winger. If we play him as a number ten, I don't think it has the same qualities, unless you put him up to play a second striker type of role. If he's gonna be a number ten, I, I think his I think he has to become a centre forward false nine in this Arsenal squad if he's going to reach his full potential because his underlying stats show that yes he's not only gonna work hard for the team in terms of pressing the pressing from the front, but he's also going to create chances and bring down the ball and create and bring others into play, bring a Jesus into the game, bring 
uh, Saka into the game, uh, Odegaard into the game. He could he could take down the ball and bring other players in it. And I think that's going to be something pivotal that's going to carry us into the back end of next season, especially when we start playing play our rhythm football and the rhythm football is not going and we have to get a gritty win from somewhere and we just need someone to go up there and hold up the ball and probably we're trying to hold trying to hold off a team and at a down time we need we need a body up there who's gonna keep pressing i think kai Havertz is a really good signing the number is 65 million no 65 million i mean is it worth it i don't know i don't know I don't know. I guess in I guess in this market, when you see the type of fees players are going for, I guess you could see it. Chelsea originally bought. The, he's still young. He he's only spent three seasons at Chelsea. Sixty five million. That's still like what fifteen million off of what Chelsea originally got for him. I'd say it's not a bad deal. I'd say if he comes in and he reaches the potential we're seeing from his underlying stats and thinking about in theory of what he can do he's going to be a brilliant player but if he comes in and flops it could be another robbery that Chelsea got away with on Arsenal again tell me what you guys think what do you think about this Kai Havertz deal um me I'm in doing my research, I can see why we got Akai Havertz. His stats look absolutely amazing in terms of giving us that second option to look at off the bench and fitting in with our team in general. Also, that added bit of height, that 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 aerial threat could be something we can look at. Because in game with the eye test, it doesn't look like he has an aerial threat. But his stats seem to show different, so... Maybe at Arsenal it might look different. Only time will tell. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for enjoying the video. If you did enjoy the video, I should say, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think the Kai Havertz would come up to. What are you expecting to see from Kai Havertz? Um and yeah. We'll see how this deal turns out. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Bye.